am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So today it's going to be about Prince William, but we're going to talk about King William the Fifth. There's been talk that um, Charles is preparing for his uh, funeral and for perhaps abdication, which is interesting because I understood that perhaps he might be taking a trip to um, Australia. But anyway, it'll be Prince William the Fifth. Let's see how that goes. So I hope you like the video. Like oh, the video. if you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So like I said, this is gonna be all about uh, Prince uh, William as King William V. So we'll have to touch a little bit about, on, um, on what's happening with uh, Charles, King Charles and, um, and such. And again, just like usual, the questions will be off the top of my head. Sadly, I don't do much preparation for these things usually. You know, I used to. I used to do a lot of uh, research into the subject I was going to talk about and sometimes give you information on the people. So if you like that, you know, tell me in the comments and I'll start doing that again. But um, this is uh, William, King William V. How is that going to work out? But uh, before we do any of that, let's have just a moment. Of course, as always, a meditation. So, William, King William V, is it going to be sooner rather than later? And, um, you know, is he going to face uh, having to carry on without his queen? What in the world would that look like? Is, is, is this going to be the time when eventually he brings Harry back into the fold? <coughs> I mean, it'll just be... Fascinating. Look at this. These cards did not like my uh, mentioning Harry. That's interesting. And now I have them upside down and right side up. So let's see. Okay, so these uh, numbers should be at the top. What a mess I've made. But I'll take a minute to clean them up. And hopefully you don't mind my doing a little housekeeping. Okay, so I don't want them upside down. I know some readers uh, like to have their cards upside down and they have uh, divinations uh, that they use for that. I don't, you know, uh, I just think that uh, they should be read uh, right side up. So, uh, however, I will mention that if cards do happen to turn up in my readings uh, inverted, I, I just assume, well, that needed to come out that way. And that's what we're going to do. But you know what? I think I saw another inverted card in here. So we're going to go through them again. And maybe you can take a minute to look through the cards as I'm doing this. It might have been the Hangman, which of course is an upside down card. An upside down looking card. That one right there. But we'll go through them all anyway. Because I have this crazy aversion to inverted cards. So what is this one? This is... Well, so that is the hangman, I guess. Yeah. So there might be some reason that card is sticking out. Um, it has made me go through all these cards. I just assume that once I start uh, the read, uh, whatever happens in here is supposed to happen for some reason or another. And I just go with it. I mean, uh, you're here to see, um, to see that. Okay, I know that this is the right side because on this side of these cards, there's a little hanger, a little picture hanger. Can you see it? You know, like you'd have on the back of your picture, place a little hook where you would have, or, uh, that you would hang your picture up and it's at the top as it should be. So this is the correct uh, position for that card. Okay, so William, King William V. You know, as usual, we're gonna do three cards just to get us uh, in the mood or get us in the space a headspace of William. No, let's do four. 
four cards for Prince William as king. Is it sooner rather than later? Uh, the first card up is, uh, what do we have here? So this is a cup and this is a knight of, is this a knight? No, this is a page of cups. So compassion. Okay, this is a man, that's appropriate. Uh, the page of cups is in the royal court without much power. So this is William uh, right now, compassionate, not very much compassion. Interesting. Has he been taught or does he see the monarchy as something that there's not much room personally in his for compassion with the other royals, if you want to say Harry's a, a royal. Um, let's see. And then we have the uh, five, six, seven, eight of the major arcana, and this is secrets being revealed. Ah, interesting. Uh, then we have uh, the nine of uh, of the major arcana, and this is the um, the. Um, the fellow who's he's looking looking for his path. He's holding up the light to see where he's going. He's got his walking stick, the hermit. The hermit uh, is going to be very careful about moving forward. And then the last card is the Ten of Wands, which is um, a heavy load to carry. And why it's depicted in this way, I'm not sure. So this is a vulnerable woman. Ah, it's Catherine. Wow, it's told us a lot. So, so to set the, the, the stage for the reading that's coming here about uh, William as king. So he, at this point, he has got very little room in his life for compassion. And I'm gonna say this is towards the royal family because he's got on the weight of, on his shoulders, the weight of the monarchy coming up. And so that's what he's laser, laser focused on. And I don't think he has space in his head for, you know, dealing with uh, compassionate family issues, at least outside of his immediate family, you know, his wife and his kids, and of course now his dad. Um, this um, moon card is secrets being revealed. So he's on the road with another male companion towards that end. Secrets being revealed. And then here is the hermit very carefully plotting his way forward. And then the, it ends up with a major part of this being uh, Catherine as, as being ill. So interesting, little compassion, secrets coming out with a companion, uh, careful uh, move forward and uh, the end of it all. And, not, and it's interesting that this is the first thing on his mind. His wife's illness doesn't seem to be the first thing on his mind in this instance, <clears throat> as it shouldn't be because he has to put the monarchy first. But he, she does play in his decision making at this point. So that's good. Um, uh, a monarch's duty is to the monarchy. Okay. And uh, how his family fits into that is uh, maybe how he's having to learn how to adjust his thinking if he hasn't already come to that already, which it seems to me like he does have kind of have that in his mind already. So King William, let's do a full Celtic cross because this is a big uh, situation. Uh, so that'll be 10 cards, but I do six and then another four uh, to finish it off. So that's two, three, four, five, and six, King William the fifth. All indications are that he will keep his name, William, and that's how he will be um, known as King William the fifth. The um, signifier card for this read then, oof, is the t Ten of Swords, which is appropriate because it is, uh, it's the end of a cycle. So, is this William or is this Charles? I want to think this is William with uh, danger and death and ends of cycles all around him. So this is what he is having to prepare for. What would he do if Catherine, at the point that Catherine can't or isn't his queen any longer? His dad is gone. Camilla is the higher uh, female uh, monarch. Does she still remain monarch when she's the uh, the dowager? So there we go. The the signifier of this appropriately 
is everything he has to worry about coming to all these cycles ending. Um, and then the Knight of Swords is he, William, as the fighter for truth, justice, rules, and law, but that's as it relates to the monarchy, okay? So uh, the challenge to all these cycles coming to an end is him dealing with that, uh, fighting for the truth, justice, rules, and law of the monarchy. Then the basis of all of this with this Eight of Wands is really so many issues to deal with at the same time. Ships setting, getting ready to sail. See, all these are masts of ships, okay? And you have the idea that they're getting ready to move out. So the basis of all of this is the beginning of his, you know, it's amazing to me how uh, appropriate the cards turn up for the question at hand. But anyway, so yeah, the basis of all of this is the beginning of that journey with all these things to coordinate. In the past of this for William is a seven of cups, illusion and delusion in the past. Interesting. It looks like maybe he expects to bring some clarity and some common sense to his reign. In the sky of this uh, reading then is the five of cups and the the Five of Cups is uh, it's compassion. This card reminds you of moving into, into um, out of troubled waters, but that's not what it is. It's being, um, having to leave some compassion behind. But this seems to be the opposite because he's getting ready to sail off into an ocean uh, and water is always, and look at the blue sky, this is always about. And so I think that his, what he's leaving behind is a bit of personal, compassion and taking on the responsibility of compassion for the um, for the kingdom more fully of course and then the likely outcome for this first part of this Celtic cross for King William the fifth is wow this is the uh, uh, 15 um, this is lesser intention this is lesser intention, this card. Ah. So the likely outcome of this is, is, is being aware of that lesser intention at this point. We'll see if it gets better defined. Um, so what are the last pieces of this for William? You know, I might do another reading on Charles while we're in here. Um, so the very self of that question, what about King William V? What can the cards tell us? The signifier of the, oh my goodness. So the Nine of Swords is that it's all a nightmare. You know, you would think you come into this after the passing of the previous monarch, you come into this with a sense of um, um, responsibility that's not a nightmare. But for him, all everything that's coming down the road right now is just a nightmare and he can't take on the problems of his brother Harry on top of all of this it's easier to just set him aside and that's exactly what he expects to do the um, the environment that that situation is in is uh, this too okay so this is the Empress um, so the situation is the Empress so this is divine guidance somehow so the situation that that's in is in otherworldly guidance the hopes and the fears for this then is ah <laughs> of course he's uh, the six of cups is looking back compassionately compassionately about how things used to be okay how things were in the past it's sad and then the uh, final outcome for king william is um ah and here we have a queen of cups maybe something's going to happen that brings um Catherine further along in this journey than some of us think that she might go. So the likely outcome of this is that there's going to be some good news as far as Catherine is concerned. I don't know if it's complete recovery, if it's a long term uh, that she's there for right to the end, or but whatever it is, there's some good news in this for, for them. So now that leads us to, instead of talking about, um, <clears throat> instead of talking about King Charles, that leads us to talking about uh, Catherine. So we have to address that right away while the cards have it kind of hot. So Catherine, 
Um, she's made a few outings more and more gently. She's easing into the public's persona. You know, you think about this when uh, perhaps when uh, Queen uh, Victoria lost her husband, um, it, it stopped her in many ways. I mean, we didn't, or we, the public didn't see her until sometime later when uh, she was kind of uh, finally able to come back into the public's arena. Uh, however that happened, some say it was Parliament that gave her the nudge. Uh, it may have been just a natural um, end of her grieving or, or, or acceptance of her grieving. But this is Catherine. 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 I want to make sure these cards are focused on Catherine only. Catherine. Let's see in six cards what they can tell us about Catherine. One, two, three, four, five. Now, of course, what we want to know is, is she going to be queen? Is she going to be queen for a substantial period of time? Um, queen Catherine. Well, this is the queen of wands. So actions, plans, forward movement. It's so appropriate that we're talking about Catherine as queen. And this first card, the signifier of this is Catherine with a plan in hand. The uh, challenge to that is things coming at a rapid pace. Wow. <clears throat> the Wheel of Fortune. The basis of this then is the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Cups is happy family. The basis of this is happy family. So Catherine's focus on this isn't the monarchy, really. Her focus on this is her family makes sense because of the way things are moving on. And the past of this is the Seven of Wands. And uh, the Seven of Wands is having to fight off a lot of issues. We have one issue right in the forefront here that's strong and, and, and leading the way in. But we see that you have to maneuver around all these other issues to get to the house, to the castle. That's in the past. The maneuvering through all these issues, this has been, I think, somewhat worked out. In the sky of this, uh, we have the 11 of the Major Arcana, and this is um, kind of a temperance, okay? Finding a balance between uh, where the value has to go while keeping your hand on truth and justice and rules and law. Truth. Catherine, what an amazing thing for someone to have to face. Uh, in the in a, what in her 40s, and then the uh, likely outcome of this for Catherine, and really, let's face it, we want to know is she going to be there for some substantial off. Oh. So this is the three of swords, and it's a broken heart. So there's going to be heartbreak in this at some point with Catherine. Uh, I don't think she's going to be on the throne as long as William will. When I don't know, Tarot's not great with timing. Okay, so, so that's those two things, but now let's go back to the current king, Charles III. What can the cards in just six cards let us know about the more than King Charles, more than King Charles, the, the way this monarchy is going to go forward? And I guess there is some focus on Charles with this, but the, we need to know six cards going forward with Charles as somewhat of the focus. Okay. I'm going to take this one because it wanted to come out and I'm going to reserve it. Okay. So, monarchy, Charles is the focus. Moving forward. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that is six. Okay, that's good. Signifier is the six of pentacles. The Six of Pentacles, I want to get a good definition for this. So let's get my cheat sheet out here. And let's look at uh, Pentacles. Cups, Wands, Swords, Pentacles, the Six. Generosity, giving, receiving, sharing, money, gifts, balance, and reward. So isn't that interesting? So the, um, the, the signifier of this regarding the continuous of the monarchy and Charles going forward is a giving, and that's his abdication. You can see here, that this gray-haired gentleman is uh, at a lesser place 
than this younger fellow up on the horse getting ready to ride out into the future. It's passing on the baton, passing on the baton. Because this is the monarchy and this is Charles and what's good for the monarchy. The challenge to that is again, all the issues, all the obstacles that have to be maneuvered through. <clears throat> the basis of this, if you think, that was interesting. <clears throat> if you think about this, this is another royal funeral right away. Another coronation right away. Another establishment of the uh, uh, infrastructure of the monarchy around William. Planning also for the potential um, uh, exit, uh, to say it nicely, of Catherine. Wow. The basis of all of this then is Catherine's illness. This is the Ten of, of, of Wands. And the Ten of Wands is so many issues to overcome. A heavy burden to carry forward. It's the basis of all of this. So this is all of these, all this planning is keeping in mind that Catherine may not be there. At least not in as much of a supportive role as you would want her to be. Uh, five, six, seven of the Major Arcana is uh, the chariot and things moving forward. Wow. That's in the past. The wheels are already in motion. It's happening. In the sky of this is the two of pentacles finding that balance. Of course it is. Finding the balance for what's happening here. And this is regarding the monarchy and King Charles III. And then the final outcome, look at this, is uh, the knight of pentacles. And this knight is on his way out of the scene. This is Charles. So the plans are being made at the monarch's level for this continuation. We knew that, but it's interesting to have the cards verify it. Let's do just two or three cards on the success of William's, William's transition for the country. Three cards, success of William's transition in the long term for the country. So, look at that. We come right up with the King of Compassion. Somehow, he's going to be either a lot of compassion had for him, or he will become the King of Compassion. The next card up, oh, it's all about Catherine again, that heavy load. And then uh, here, the Seven of Cups, Illusion and Delusion. My goodness. I had an instinct that this card should be in the center of this, because that, to me, is usually the most important position in these three card pulls. But no, the most important part of this is the heavy load to bear concerning Catherine. So, King William the Fifth, the King of Compassion, uh, Queen Catherine, uh, illness, and a heavy load to carry. And the final outcome is delusion, illusion and delusion. And uh, that's very interesting. And uh, I don't think we can define that more at this moment. It's just too far in the future for my uh, little brain. So I hope you like the video. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. So this Impressionist Tarot, these cards are everything that I've ever wanted in a set of cards except for the quality. And I'll tell you what I mean. The um, box is fantastic. It's a beautiful box. If you gave this as a gift or if you got it as a gift, you'd feel like, wow, somebody really put some thought into what they were uh, giving me. And the guidebook is very useful. It's a full color guidebook with very thoughtful uh, ideas as to the divination of the cards. And uh, the, uh, the creators of this are Corrine Kenner and the artwork by Arturo Pica. And so what they've done is they've actually taken Impressionist's um, that you will know of and, uh, and that you will see art in galleries and, um, and use their art to make these cards. And, um, and so what they've, they've taken the actual artwork, um, and sometimes, uh, Arturo Pica has added elements to the original art to help in the divination, or he may have blended a couple of, uh, pieces of art, uh, from one or two or uh, artists to uh, get to this uh, this work here. But they're gorgeous to use. I love them. And uh, I feel like this is just a good way to get the cards mixed up without creating too much damage to them. I mean, some folks like to kind of really handle the cards and bend them and break them you know, to uh, make them theirs. That's just not what I like to do. Uh, nothing wrong with that if that's what you like to do. But uh, this Impressionist Tarot, I'm so happy with these cards.